Dare to be Wild is a romantic adventure story based on a true story. Uh, and it's a beautiful, inspirational film about a young landscape designer and the man of her dreams and their quest to change the world. One garden, one vast desert at a time. Well, in about 1993, I got cancer and I had been fantasizing about writing screenplays my whole life. I was never interested in writing novels. I always just was interested in doing screenplays, probably from childhood because my mother was a, an English te teacher and a local theatre director. And so um, I became very interested in environmental issues and I wrote, I wrote a, a science fiction story based on Gaia theory, that the Earth is a big superorganism that will self-correct if you give it a chance. And it's set 157 years into the future. And I wrote another 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 uh, story based on the same thing, which is called The Orchid Eaters, a spin on the Orchid Eaters. And both of those, Harvey Weinstein and Ridley Scott, wanted to option. And I thought in my incredible innocence, that's great, but I'm not selling them unless I get to direct them. Well, they were big science fiction epics. That's how naive I was. But I had gone and investigated the craft all by myself and um, just read every book I could find and went on every set I could find and harassed every director I knew, like people like Neil Jordan and just lots of different people. And I would sit on the sets behind them when I could escape from my boring desk job as a lawyer and uh, had a plan that this was going to happen. I just didn't think it would take so long. So when I had made quite a lot of money from doing corporate finance, now I had a lot of money then, I don't have a lot of money now because now I'm an artist, um, I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I decided I wanted to do a wild garden in West Cork when I returned. I lived in Chicago most of my life, but when I returned to Ireland, and so I bought a little cottage with a beautiful view over Roaring Water Bay and I wrote a design brief with my wish list, which said I wanted the the garden to look very much as if it was part of the landscape and articulated into Roaring Water Bay with its vast islands and peninsulas and its plays of light and shade. And I wanted a moated effect around the house. I wanted a hawthorn fairy laid in a wildflower meadow and all of these incredibly fanciful things. And I sent it off to uh, three big name, you know, landscape designers. And they sent back something that bore no relationship to my design brief. And somebody said, oh, you don't want those. You want Mary Reynolds. She does wild. And so one day Mary Reynolds rocked up to my house when it was like a building site, wearing a hard hat and builder's boots and a full length, a bright green tulle skirt and uh, which she was dragging around in the mud and, and, a, and a ton of attitude. And she was young, you know, she's probably at this stage. She was in her 20s at this stage. And uh, I said, you know, I'd really like you to do the garden. And she looked at me and thought, "Ugh, banker, you know, <laughs> and, and, and she said, well, how much do you want to spend? And I said, well, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I didn't know how much anything would cost. So I said, I don't know, 25,000. And she said, well, that would be my fee. And I said, oh, OK. But about six months later, I kind of forgot about it. And about six months later, these incredible designs arrived, just incredible designs beyond my wildest design brief dreams. And I had to find a way to build the garden. And so I did. And it's still it's there now to this day, needing a bit of love and attention because I've been working in the film for five years hard, flat out. And so um, and putting every dime I had into it as well as as well as the investors times. <laughs> and so that's how it came about. That's how we met. That's how she told me her story. And our philosophies uh, were very much aligned because her idea was to invite, you know, wild nature back into that little space we control ourselves. And I always felt that if we could experience wild nature in our own gardens, it's only then that we'd feel the need to protect the wild. And so that's how the story came about. So it moves incredibly rapidly. So there's all this beautiful landscape and everything, but all the time you feel this pressure that she's trying to beat the clock and that she's no way after she gets to be admitted to the Chelsea Flower Show. I mean, it's a, it's a story of competitive gardening and the environment, and it's a big love story. And in the end, she gets the prize and she gets the man. And Prince Charles became her neighbour. So she ended up doing a fabulous garden in Kew Gardens as well, compliments of the British state. Yes, did a budget based on, you know, about 50 screens. And I gather, well, as of next week, we're going to be well over the 200 mark on the screens. And we're in, you know, the view and Cineplex, Cineworld and uh, 
picture house and various others independents all over the country we're kind of doing a rolling release because we think it's a film that's going to really pick up with word of mouth I mean we can't afford I'm on the same playbill as you know Bridget Jones baby and uh, Ben Hur and uh, Cafe Society and and, and I, I mean we don't have studio budgets so we're just hoping that word of mouth will, will carry the day because people do really love the movie I mean all kinds of people people would come up to me after screenings we've had and like grown men would throw their arms around me they'd be kind of weeping and they'd say things like I remember places like this from when I was a child you know so so the, my idea with the film was that I wanted people to really feel what they're losing by not being engaged with wild nature in some way